posted February 25, 2019 13 hours 0 minutes and 10 seconds If it wasn't for Phil Saviano, the Catholic Church may never have faced up to the abusers within its ranks who preyed on children. Key Points Archbishop Coleridge of Brisbane delivered the homily at the summit's closing mass and admitted the Church has been cruel to victims of Euro Cardinal and bishops told the summit the Vatican should start publishing its thousands of secret files Investigators said transparency has been lacking since more and more abuse allegations have been referred to the Holy See His dogged determination helped shine a light on a global scandal. Mr. Saviano's push to expose the priests in his diocese who molested children in Boston was immortalized in the movie Spotlight. Mr. Saviano, who was abused as an 11-year-old by a priest, helped journalists investigate an elaborate cover-up which led to a chain reaction that has engulfed the global Catholic Church. The Boston Globe really blew things open, then we started hearing about cases in Ireland, and your country Australia, Mr. Saviano said. At an unprecedented meeting of the world's highest-ranking Catholics at the Vatican, Mr. Saviano said he was completely dismayed by the Pope's response to those scandals, I thought I was going to find a little bit of accountability, a little bit of transparency. I really did think that they were moving in that direction, whatever trust they had gained, that trust is eroding fast, people are bailing out of the sinking ship, closing the summit on the Church's abuse crisis, Pope Francis called pedophile priests the tools of Satan, if there should emerge even a single case of abuse in the Church, which already in itself represents an atrocity, that case will be faced with the utmost seriousness, he said. He promised new rules, guidelines and task forces to assist bishops, which Anne Barrett Doyle from Bishop Accountability called it stunning letdown. One of Australia's most senior Catholics, the Archbishop of Brisbane Mark Coleridge, delivered the homily at the closing mass, admitting the Church had been cruel to victims, we have not loved them, we have not blessed them. In that sense, we have been our own worst enemy. We will not go unpunished, Archbishop Coleridge said. There was a lot of talk about the Church's hidden files, accused Australian priests are among them several cardinals and bishops told the summit that the Vatican should start publishing its secret files, one of the things you could be transparent about is the over 6,000 priests whose names have been delivered to the Vatican because they're child abusers, Mr. Saviano said, who are these men, where are they today? What were their assignment records? Archbishop Coleridge told ABC News that the Vatican had files on Australian priests accused of abusing children. He said he had, not the faintest idea, how many Australian cases were among a trove of allegations sitting with Vatican investigators. But he said he would urge the Vatican to expedite the investigations, just as delayed is just as denied and some of these processes take a very long time here, he said, I have to say that survivors have been asking for this for a very long time. It's taken us a long time to listen and take it on board. Investigators in the Vatican admit transparency has been lacking in the decades since more and more abuse allegations have been referred to the Holy See. Asked if the Church had compiled data on its volumes of abuse investigations and documents, Archbishop Charles Shikluna of Malta said no, I must say this is a legitimate question, I'm not trying to hide behind anything, he said. Archbishop Shikluna, a former Vatican investigator, said, Sexual abuse is an egregious crime, but so is cover-up. Mr. Saviano said the release of hidden files would be one of the most transformative reforms the Catholic Church could make. The interest these men have in going after young people sexually is a lifelong interest, he said. It would be a really good to know where they are so somebody can keep an eye on them. In a room full of cardinals and bishops, women stole the show video, Nigerian nun sister Veronica Openibo spoke at the summit, ABC News, many survivors on the sidelines of the high-profile summit in Rome were aghast at the number of women invited to participate. As one long-term Vatican analyst asked, where the hell are the women? The role of women within the Church has been in the spotlight in recent months after the rape of nuns by priests was exposed by Vatican newspaper law servitor Romano. The most passionate and forthright speeches delivered to bishops at the Vatican came from three women who are experts on the Church's child abuse crisis. 
Nigeria nun sister Veronica Openibo read the riot act to bishops in the room, telling them they had put the concerns of abusers ahead of victims, the excuse that respect be given to some priests by virtue of their advanced years and hierarchical position is unacceptable, she said, is it true that most bishops did nothing about the sexual abuse of children? Some did and some did not out of fear or cover up, canon lawyer Linda Gisoni suggested bishops kneel before the victims and their families. Meanwhile, veteran Vatican reporter Valentina Lazraki told bishops they could expect more investigations if they did not report things when you know them, if you do not decide in a radical way to be on the side of the children, mothers, families, civil society, you are right to be afraid of journalists, Archbishop Coleridge said, aging, celibate males like me have our contribution to make, but it's nowhere near enough, one of the things I take back with me is the need to listen, and I mean not just casually, but really listen to women in this whole process. Victims want zero tolerance for pedophile priests. Bishops have a different definition. The key demand from victims in Rome was that the church enact a zero tolerance policy for those who have abused children and others who hushed up their crimes. Survivors said that meant seeing more priests defrocked, meaning they can no longer present as a priest or celebrate the sacraments. The most recent case where that has happened was a decision to demote the disgraced former Cardinal Theodore McCarrick, once the Archbishop of Washington. Pete Saunders, a survivor of abuse from the UK, said the McCarrick case should be the standard punishment for priests who rape children, they should have taken the issue of the McCarrick seriously 25 to 30 years ago when they knew damned well that he was bad news and had abused and assaulted boys and seminarians, the Pope, as Supreme Pontiff of the Catholic Church, has all the power to write into canon law that simple line, that if you abuse, you are out. End of story, Archbishop Coleridge said priests guilty of abuse should be removed from public ministry, but argued that some could be better monitored within the clergy, I don't think it should be automatic, I think you've got to look at individual cases, I'm always uneasy about mandatory sentencing. Removing from exercise of ministry should not be seen as a punishment but rather as the duty to protect the flock, Archbishop Shakluna said. Cardinal Sean O'Malley from Boston said, Zero tolerance was so clearly articulated by St. John Paul II who said that there is no place in the priesthood for those who have harmed children. Cardinal O'Malley said that, has to be a line in the sand, Mr. Saviano said civil investigations which could subpoena witnesses and evidence are paramount, I think probably the most important thing, is that now, the top law enforcement officials in the United States are through with the Vatican, topics, religion and beliefs, child abuse, Catholic community and society, sexual offenses, law crime and justice, Holy See Vatican City State.